And it's all my fault because I should have checked that beforehand. I looked very unprepared and not very serious about this interview. Hello and welcome back! A few weeks ago I had a technical interview for a well-known coding bootcamp, which I unfortunately didn't pass. I was a little sad about that, but I quickly realized what I had failed at and what I could have done differently before and during the interview in order to have had a different outcome. So today I'll be sharing with you what those realizations were in hopes that you won't make those same mistakes in your next technical interview. I'd like to add that this particular bootcamp has a very low acceptance rate at 6%, so perhaps if you're not specifically applying to Flatiron School, your technical interview won't be as rigorous. However, this information applies to any type of technical interview. I'll start by telling you a little bit about my application process. I first filled out an application on their website where I provided my personal information and answered questions about my background and my experience with coding. Three days later, I was contacted over the phone by the admissions department, inviting me to schedule my first interview. This interview was a non-technical interview where I would answer questions about my background and what I expected to achieve from being in Flatiron School Software Development Program. It is during these non-technical interviews that coding bootcamps see if you and your background are a good culture fit for their program. Afterwards, I got invited to schedule a technical interview. I was encouraged to schedule that interview anytime in the near future. However, there was a lab or coding challenge that I had to complete before that interview. The technical interview would be based on the lab that I had to solve, and I had the option to solve it in either JavaScript or Ruby. I chose JavaScript because it is what I'm most comfortable with. During the technical interview, I had to share my screen with the instructor and explain my code line by line to them. The last part of that technical interview was doing some peer programming with the instructor. The first mistake that I made was the most obvious one. I was unprepared. I didn't prepare myself enough and that really showed during my interview. I hope that some of you can relate to this. I am a little bit ashamed of admitting this, but I was a little too confident. I was under the impression that this technical interview was targeted towards people who have never coded before or either had very little experience coding. So I figured that since I had already been doing it for about a year, it would be a little bit less challenging for me. But I was very wrong. I was put on the spot and I couldn't think clearly and I didn't find the answer to the question that she asked me. So I was definitely very humbled by that experience. Feeling too confident led me to not prepare myself enough or study enough. I knew I had to explain my code to her, but I didn't take the time to go over my code on my own before the interview and explain it out loud. I also did the lab two times, but I didn't take more time to practice other algorithms outside of that lab. If you are about to have a technical interview, you can never be too prepared. If you have been given a lab or a challenge, go over it more than two times, more than three times. Copy your code somewhere else and start from scratch. The more familiar you are with these concepts, the more prepared you'll be for your interview. My second mistake was getting too nervous, overwhelmed, and doubting myself. Now, it is normal to get nervous. Everybody does, even the most experienced programmers. However, I let my nerves take the best of me. I was put in the spot and I felt overwhelmed and I couldn't think clearly. Instead of thinking about how to solve the problem, all I could think about was how I didn't have the answer to the problem. I doubted myself and my mind went blank. I should have taken a deep breath and walked through the problem sentence by sentence, line by line. I know now that I could have asked more questions or clarifying questions about what she exactly wanted from me. A part of me felt like I should have already known these things, but that's not the case. We are all here to learn. What the instructor wanted from me more than the answer itself was to hear what my thought process was like and how I felt when I was put on the spot. What Cody Bootcamps want from the technical interview is to see that you have the ability to learn, not that you already have all the answers. My third mistake ties a little bit to being unprepared. I had technical difficulties, but that was all on me. 
For my first interview, the non-technical one, I was sat at the computer 15 or 10 minutes before and the night before I tested my speakers and I tested the headphones that I wanted to use. I made sure that everything that I could have need for the interview was set and ready to go. I had a backup speaker and I had backup headphones. However, for this interview, I wasn't as prepared. I had two minutes before I had to go online for the interview and I couldn't pair my headphones to my computer. And it's all my fault because I should have checked that beforehand. I looked very unprepared and not very serious about this interview. By the time we connected, I wasn't sure if she could hear me. My fourth mistake was not explaining my code in its entirety. So like I mentioned earlier, you're supposed to solve this lab and then explain your code line by line. This specific lab consisted of four functions that I had to write to iterate through arrays. The last and fourth function, I felt that it wasn't fully functional. It passed all of the tests, but it only worked for that specific array that it was given. So I tried to make it a little bit more functional by writing a separate function underneath it. I personally wasn't very sure about that function since it wasn't passing the tests. I just commented out and left it there for future reference so I can come back to it. I should not have left anything there that I could not explain. I knew that I had to share my screen with her and all I said was that last function that's commented out, I don't think I can explain it, I'm not going to try. <laughs> so she ended up trying to explain it for me, to me, and I felt so silly because I had written that code and I couldn't explain it myself. It just made me look really bad. Never leave any code that you cannot explain and you're not confident about. I learned that the hard way. And the fifth and last mistake, I don't know if it really played a big role in me not passing the interview. However, I do think that it just added to the pile of reasons for me not to pass the interview. I originally had this interview scheduled for a Tuesday morning, two weeks ago. However, I had to take a last minute trip and I was out of town and I had to reschedule my interview for the next day, which was Wednesday. I rescheduled my interview very close to the original interview time. And perhaps the reason that I provided, which is the reason that I just gave you, was not valid enough for them. And I feel like that just translated into me being unprepared and not serious about this interview. After the interview, I was contacted by the lady that I had been in touch with from the admissions department and she sadly let me know that I hadn't passed. However, I do have a second chance at another interview and if I pass this interview, I can get into the coding bootcamp. I'm having the interview in two days from now on Thursday and I am very excited about that. I have definitely done things very differently this time and I'll be making a video showing you how I studied and what resources I used. I am not that nervous because I know that with or without a bootcamp, I am trying my best to become a software developer. So it's all part of the process. Every technical interview that I go through is making me a better developer every time. Those are the five main reasons that I feel like helped me not pass that technical interview for Flatiron School. I hope that this is of help to someone who is about to have a technical interview and you can avoid making the same mistakes I made. You can never be 100% ready, but you can give it your best. On that note, I am saying goodbye. Thank you very much for watching and if you enjoyed this or find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And I will see you next time. Bye!